welcome to this podcast family. My name is Paul and I'm in Peterhead in Scotland. Very pleased to be here. Today we are in Zechariah chapter 9. Um, a distinct change again in the language uh, of this chapter and also in terms of the uh, things that are dealt with. Um, principally there is mention of other places. Um, so far in this book of 14 chapters, there's mainly been mention of Babylon in terms of the captives coming from Babylon back to Israel. There's been general mention in the previous uh, chapter we studied, chapter 8, of the nations taking hold of him that is a Jew, which is the Lord Jesus, saying, we'll go with you, we've heard God is with you. Um, and also that many nations will go to supplicate Yahweh. Um, and so in terms of millennial kingdom and all nations being subjected to the Son of God uh, and God ruling through Christ all creation. Um, and so there's been little mention uh, of other nations up until this chapter that we're about to get into, chapter 9. Um, also in chapter 7, there was persons came from a place in Israel called Bethel, um, and they travelled to Chislev to seek reconciliation with their brethren, their fellow Jews. So that was like an internal movement in terms of reconciliation. Um, but prior to that, there's very little mention uh, of other places in this book of Zechariah. So it's not dissimilar to um, the book of Jeremiah, um, in the book of Jeremiah, the latter chapters, uh, let me see, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, those six chapters, they deal with God's dealings with the nations that had oppressed the Jews. So God had used the surrounding countries to deal with the Jews, and then God dealt with those countries that had dealt with the Jews. And in Jeremiah 46, 3, 51, you can look at God's dealings, God's government, God's sovereign dealings with those nations. Chapter 50 and 51 deal with uh, Babylon. Um, and of course, the, uh, the the scribe, like it was Shebna, the scribe of Jeremiah, took the words of Jeremiah actually into the captivity, into Babylon. So when, when the Jews arrived in Babylon, um, the word of the Lord delivered through Jeremiah was actually there physically with them. They had physical copies. Uh, of the truth that Jeremiah had declared. So in a sense, they took with them the knowledge and the reality that, that the place they'd been, they'd been taken captive to and taken captive by was about to be destroyed, albeit 70 years later. And of course, we have the wonderful book of Daniel and we've got 29 podcasts on this channel covering the entire book of Daniel, a great book it is too. And of course, he was a prophet of the captivity uh, along with Ezekiel and Obadiah. Um, and Daniel prophesies clearly to the very face of the King Nebuchadnezzar in his very palace that his kingdom was finished, that Babylon would cease to be a nation, um, and that the most high rules. And Nebuchadnezzar had to realize that the heavens rule, that men didn't rule and devils didn't rule. Elohim, Yehovah, rules all things. And Nebuchadnezzar had to go through various exercises to understand that. And part of that was a holy dream in Daniel 2 of the stone cut out of the mountain with our hands that comes into the world, becomes a great mountain and fills the whole planet. And that is, of course, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, the Christ. At this moment in time, thy Christ God is every man, woman and child upon this planet living and dead. Christ is every atom, neutron, proton, macron, nucleus. Christ is everything, everyone, everywhere, except the doomed, deluded demons. They are destroyed. So, so in the same way, at the end of Jeremiah, you have six chapters dealing with God's dealings with the enemies of Israel. In the same way, in Zechariah chapter 9, um, we have that as well. 
So just bear with me, friends. I've just realised that the uh, this. So it's a great thing to contemplate that God's sovereign dealings will deal with every mortal. Um, a very solemn thing to think of those that have spoken against the Lord Jesus, uh, those that have spoken against the Holy Spirit, and those that have spoken against Elohim Yahweh. Uh, well, unless their sins are covered by the blood of the Son of God 2,000 years ago, then they will be accountable for every thought, word, and deed. Um, it is now the end of this age. Um, Elohim Yahweh is very, very, very great. Um, it is time uh, for God's sovereign operations to be fully revealed upon the earth, friends. We see uh, imminent the great global resurrection, hundreds of millions of saints throughout the ages, and they will be immediately clothed with physical immortality, uh, and they will then ascend with this current living generation uh, of followers of Jesus. They too will be clothed with physical immortality and will ascend through the skies to the seven-year marriage supper of Jesus. One man, one woman, the eternal triune, redeeming bridegroom and his wife, the church only, the Lamb's wife, made up of hundreds and hundreds of millions of human beings. Only the Lamb's wife is a suitable counterpart for Jesus. To think of the father bringing the son and the son's wife to himself. Uh, to think of God fulfilling all his great promises. Uh, everything that is written comes to pass. God always keeps his word, friends. To think of the assurance of the promises given to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Uh, given to King David, to Noah, to Solomon. All the promises. Uh, to think of God incarnate, the Christ God. There's a beautiful portion of scripture in Isaiah 45. And indeed, we've got 80 podcasts on this channel covering the entire book of Isaiah. Um, you could go and listen to the one on chapter 45 if you wish. It's a very, very strong chapter where God declares that Cyrus, who's a type of Christ Jesus, will have a straight path uh, and that contrariety and adversity will be removed. Uh, God will break the bars asunder. And that which seemed difficult will be made easy. Similar to in Zechariah, I suppose. Who are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Um, God removing all contrariety for Christ and thus for the believers in Christ. So in, in that chapter, uh, it is written um, that God creates shalom and also makes calamity. Uh, it's a very powerful portion of scripture, friends. Because of righteousness and because of truth. Yeah. So it says, I, Jehovah, who call you by name and the God of Israel, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I've called you by your name. I surnamed you, though, did you, though you did not know me. I am Yahweh. There's nobody else. There's no God beside me. I girded thee, and you've not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the going down there's nobody besides me. I am Yehovah, there's nobody else, forming the light, creating darkness, making peace, creating evil. I, Jehovah, do all these things. Drop down, you heavens, from above. Let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and with it let righteousness spring up. I, Jehovah, have created it. So it's this thought of God surnaming men. And the men don't know that it's God that surnamed them. He's given them the name. And then a few verses on it says, I've clothed you, though you've not known me. It's similar to a body you've prepared for me. I come to do your will, O God, a body that was prepared for me. So God has clothed mankind, though they didn't know him. Um, and it's almost, uh, well, it's a presentation to the intellectual and moral faculties of mankind to appropriate this knowledge. So God sends men to men that men may know 
um, that the Lord is absolutely supreme and sovereign, the sovereign over all flesh. All mortals are as grasshoppers, the wicked, his sword, mankind, the hand of God. El Elohi Yahovah is very, very, very great, friends. All humanity is simply the hand of God, the hand of Yahovah. All humanity that has or will ever exist. Now, be careful with this now. Let's think, friends. Live move and have their being inside of Elohim, Yahovah, the Lord God Almighty. Mortals are simply the hands and feet of Yahovah. Nothing moves without Yahovah. Everything was taken in house at the time of the fall as it was. And Christ the word of God, the very life, that eternal life, the very life in every creature. These things are a holy mystery, friends, difficult to explain without the Holy Spirit, very difficult to understand. But Christ is everything, everyone, everywhere. Christ is as a bridegroom rejoicing to go forth from his chamber, as a strong man rejoicing to run a race. Christ is everything, everyone, everywhere. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. All God's purposes in one man. Zechariah, chapter 9. The burden of the word of Jehovah in the land of Hadrach and on Damascus shall it rest, for Yahovah has an eye upon men and upon all the tribes of Israel, and also on Hamath, which bordereth thereon, on Tyre and Zidon though she be very wise. And Tyre hath built herself a stronghold, and hath heaped up silver as the dust, and fine gold as the mire of the streets. Behold, Adonai the Lord will take possession of her, and he will smite her power in the sea, and she shall be devoured with fire. Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Gaza also, and she shall be greatly pained. Ekron also, for her expectation shall be put to shame. And the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. And I will take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations from between his teeth. But he that remaineth, he also shall belong to our God and shall be as a leader in Judah and Ekron as a Jebusite. And I will encamp about my house because of the army, because of those that pass by and that return, and the exact or shall not pass through them any more. For now have I seen it with mine eyes. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh to thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding upon an ass, even upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse 
from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak shalom to the nations, and his dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I will send forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Turn again to the stronghold, prisoners of hope, even today do I declare. I will render double to thee. For I have bent Judah for me. I have filled the bow with Ephraim, and I will raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and make thee like the sword of a mighty man. And Jehovah shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as a lightning. And Adonai, Jehovah, will blow the trumpet, and will march with whirlwinds of the south. Yavah Sebaot will defend them, and they shall devour, and shall tread down the sling stones. And they shall drink, and make a noise as from wine, and they shall be filled like a bowl, like the corners of the altar. And Yahweh their Elohim shall save them. Jehovah their God shall save them. In that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown. Lifted up upon his land. For how great is his goodness. And how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men flourish. And new wine, the maidens. Well, friends, very powerful portion of scripture. Once again, the character uh, from chapter seven, there's 40 chapters in the book, uh, from seven onwards changes. Um, I've already mentioned this chapter largely. Uh, well, uh, substantially deals with other places that have been enemies um, of Israel. Now, at that time in human history, friends, for a country or a tribe or a people to be an enemy, it didn't mean that they wrote bad things about them on WhatsApp, uh, nor did it mean uh, that they heckled them. It meant that they brutalised them, starved them, threatened them and oppressed them and did other heinous things to them. So when you read in the ancient scripture of persons their enemies, it meant usually that they'd committed and were about to commit further atrocities against the Jews. So I'll make no mistake about that. Now, um, here we see Damascus, which of course is the capital of Syria. And Syria is uh, Assyria. It's got the word as in it. And Dam, ask us. Damascus, um, Hadrach, that has to do with anger. Um, and so they have the burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach, and on Damascus shall it rest, because the Lord has an eye upon men and upon all the tribes of Yashorel. So you see there a definite distinction between Jewry, the Jews, and the non-Jews, you see, and also on Hamath. Of course, at the present time, uh, the Jews are fighting a war uh, that the uh, deluded wicked Muslims in the south of Israel started uh, on October the 7th, 2023, when they invaded and brutally slaughtered over 1,300 persons in the south of Israel, men, women, children and babies. They brutalized them, tortured them, butchered them and burnt them alive. And they kidnapped uh, over 200 of them took them into Gaza, and uh, it was a real invasion. And before that, October 7, 2023, there was largely peace uh, in that place, in that region. Um, 
And so this scripture here deals with Hamath, which is the same as Hamas. You see, and Hamath, it simply means the equation. The devil made a trade of the word of God. You say, oh no, you won't die. You can take the knowledge of evil. You won't die. You'll be all right. No, just take the knowledge of evil. Um, you'll live forever. You won't die. God's not telling you the truth. So the devil questioned the very veracity, authenticity, and goodness and truth and righteousness of the word of God. Um, and the word of God, Christ Jesus, is now destroyed, the doomed, deluded, deviled, and his estimations and his thoughts, his calculations, his math. So also on her math, which borders Tyre and Sidon, though she'd be very wise. And Tyre has built a stronghold, heaped up silver as the dust, fine gold as the streets. Adonai will take possession of her. When you see, we use the Derby translation on this channel. I very much love the King James and the New King James and other translations. But it has to be said that the Derby translation is likely the, the most accurate, um, principally because where you where it says uh, the tetragrammaton Y H W H, it renders it Jehovah rather than all caps L O R D, because uh, that's the personal name of God. Now, of course, all these things are under the sovereignty of God. Um, but another reason, if you look at verse four in the text, there it says, "Behold, behold, the Lord will take possession of her." You know, in Mr. Darby's translation, when it's a capital L, small O R D. That's a different word. That's the word Adonai, you see. Whereas if you was to compare, if you was to be interested in such matters, friends, you could compare the different copies of Scripture and you would see that the King James has a quite different and therefore inaccurate rendering of those terms. It inserts the word God where the Hebrew word Elohim, El or Elohim is simply not there. So therefore it's... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very good translation in every, most of the respects, don't misunderstand me, but when it comes to certain features that I view as very important in translation matters, um, it's not entirely accurate. So in verse 4 there, where it's capital L, small O-R-D, that's the word Adonai, uh, which we just refers to absolute sovereign dominical power and authority, but it doesn't have the personal name. The personal name, however, um, is twice in verse 1. Now, one of the features of Zechariah is Jehovah of hosts, or Yehovah Sevaot, the Lord of armies. Um, whereas the prime feat, one of the prime features of the book of Jeremiah, for example, was the Lord Jehovah, Adonai Yehovah. And if you were to look in other translations, you would see that that's completely unclear. You know, instead of uh, Adonai Yehovah, it wouldn't make sense if they put the Lord, if they put Lord, Lord, every time you have Adonai Yahweh, you see. So they've had to change it. Um, but, but in the book of Jeremiah, the words Lord Jehovah, Adonai Yahweh, is in that book more than any other. And similarly, in the book of Ze Zechariah, it's Jehovah of hosts, the Lord of powers, the Lord of armies. So these are very precious things to take note of, friends, and uh, if you think in terms of those books, I suppose you think of Jeremiah was before the captivity. Um, and in there it's Adonai Yahovah. But here after the captivity in Zechariah, it's Yahweh Sebaot. So it's the absolute sovereignty of God in all the affairs of mortals. The Lord of all powers. Everything was made through, for, with, and by Christ. All things live through Christ Jesus, for Christ Jesus, with him, and for him, and all things serve him. Now, so the Lord will take possession of her Adonai, and he will smite her power in the sea, and she shall be devoured with fire. Ashkelon will see it in Gaza. She'll be greatly pained. Ekron also, for expectation, will be put to shame, and the king shall perish from Gaza and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Now, a bastard uh, is thought in modern parlance as to be a word that shouldn't be used. And I suppose, well, it's a word I don't use normally, but it's not a, 
is not an ungrammatical word. It is a dictionary word. It is an actual term that strictly refers to a child um, whose parents are not in matrimony. Um, now, in this sense here, um, it speaks of a person who doesn't have the fatherhood of God, no, neither the uh, the love of the Father or the love of the Holy Spirit. Um, in verse 5, it tells you the king will perish from Gaza. Of course, at this present time, in 20, January 2024, uh, we see that Israel rules Gaza at the present time. And going forwards, Israel has complete control of the south of Israel. Um, so that's a very precious thing to think of. And this scripture does say the king shall perish from Gaza. The wicked Hamas government that invaded and committed an act of war um, in uh, October the 7th, 2023, they're no longer in power. They've been removed from power. I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. And it has to be said uh, that at, at the time of 9-11, when wicked Muslims... Uh, crashed two large aeroplanes into the Twin Towers in America, in New York, uh, killing over a thousand persons going about their business. Uh, and a terrible, terrible incident that there were tens of thousands of wicked Muslims celebrating, buying gifts for each other and dancing in the streets. You can see the footage yourselves, friends. Never a good thing to rejoice when someone's suffering and dying. It's a terrible thing to do. Any such person that slanders or attacks parents or rejoices when persons are suffering and dying, that tells you uh, where they are, friends, spiritually uh, and in truth. Now, so we see here um, that cut off the pride of the Philistines, the, uh, in the same way in the modern era, um, at the time of these attacks, not only did the Muslim terrorists calling themselves Hamas uh, invade and brutalize uh, 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 many, many persons in the south of Israel, they also lots of uh, Gazan Philistine citizens invaded Israel through the holes in the fences and also committed atrocities. And then there is footage of um, Israeli captives, of whom there was over 200 persons from the south of Israel taken into Gaza. There is shocking footage of a, a, a naked woman, a naked young woman who appears to be dead in the back of a truck surrounded by uh, men in their teens and 20s with guns. They're spitting on her dead corpse as it's being paraded through packs of re rejoicing Palestinians in the streets of Gaza. So the harsh reality is that uh, the vast majority of persons that live in the region known as Gaza, they hate the Jews. They are, bro they are brought up from an early age to hate the Jewish people. It's very, very sad because, of course, uh, you know, the reality is uh, that, that 99 of those Palestinians have never ever been even remotely harmed by any of the living Jews at all. In fact, quite the opposite. The Jews have given them peace and safety, electricity, water and gas um, in that region, you see, in the land of Israel in the south there. So the children are brought up by their parents to hate the Jews and to believe in the false prophet Muhammad um, and to disbelieve the Lord Jesus Christ. They are taught these wicked things it's like a, an unholy trinity believe the lie believe the wicked quran and the wicked muhammad disbelieve the son of god the holy the true the righteous the faithful the just and to hate the jewish people so that's the stark reality of it um and of course there's various recordings of these uh, wicked Muslims that, that invaded and brutalized persons in the south of Israel on October the 7th, bringing their family members and rejoicing at the brutalization and slaughter and torture of Jews and their families on the other end of the phone in Gaza, congratulating them and thinking it's absolutely wonderful what they've done. Um, 
So I'm not suggesting every Mohammedan that, that lives in the south of Israel is wicked. But what I am saying is uh, nine out of ten of them hate the Jewish people simply because it's a societal, cultural inculcation. But just as Christian children are brought up to be kind and compassionate and loving to all, the Mohammedans are brought up to, to largely uh, hate the Jews. So what will happen is, is Gaza will not be inhabited. Tells you there. The king will perish from Gaza. Well, that's what's happened. The pride of the Philistines is cut off. It's now like a, it's like a, a, a battleground. It's, it's just been destroyed as uh, Gaza. I will take away blood out of his mouth. The abominations from between his teeth. So, so that has to do with uh, with torture and violence and wickedness. But he that remaineth will belong to our God and will be as a leader in Judah and Ekron, as a Jebusite. It's very interesting verses. Much more could be said about these things, friends. Look at this verse 8. Of course, this would be uh, Zechariah 9, 8. I will encamp about my house because of the army, because of those that pass by and return. And the exact door shall not pass through them any more, for now I've seen it with my eyes. It's very interesting. I would suggest that speaks of the Son of God in terms of mediation and intercession and concern for the safety and well-being of the saints, the protect, protection of the sheep. And then we have Zechariah 9, 9, a very phenomenal verse uh, halfway through the chapter. Um, exactly halfway through the chapter, actually. Zechariah 9, 9 is exactly halfway through chapter 9. Um, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh to thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, even upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Yes, so quite beautifully, friends, if you look at Zechariah 9, 9, rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king comes to you, he is just having salvation, lowly riding upon an ass, even upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Now, this is mentioned in all four Gospels. Um, which is quite rare when it comes to Old Testament prophecies. Um, they're very often mentioned in one or two Gospels, but this particular verse is mentioned in all four Gospels. Uh, Matthew 21. Um, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village over against you and immediately ye will find an ass tied and a colt with it. Loose them and lead them to me. And if anyone says to you anything, you say the Lord has need of them, straightway he will send them. But as all this came to pass, that that might be fulfilled, which was spoken through the prophets. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh to thee, meek and mounted upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And then also, friends, in Mark 11. This is the same account. Uh, 
there it's simply the colt. We find the colt tied upon which no humans ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And then also, friends, Luke chapter 19. verse 30 and there it's simply the cult so in Matthew it's the cult and an ass in Mark and Luke it's simply a cult and lastly in the wonderful Gospel of John. It looks like I can't spell, but it's just this tablet, friends. Sometimes you put the number in and it comes out different. You're attempting to type it correctly, but for some reason it gets jumbled up. Here we are. John 12. Um verse 13 they took branches of palms and went out to meet him and cried hosanna blessed is he that comes in the name of the lord the king of israel and jesus having found a young ass sat upon it as it is written fear not daughter of zion behold thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt very interesting in verse 19 perhaps we'll study john's gospel friends very precious and unique gospel the writings of john one two three john the eight books of revelation the seven letters and the rest of the book um and also of course john's gospel very precious it's the divine side the secret side there's very little mention of death of the devil or failure in verse 19 it says the pharisees said to one another you see, you profit nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. Of course, outwardly, the Pharisees had their way and Christ was crucified. But of course, uh, now the risen Christ, God rules the whole planet. <laughs> Christ uh, rules the whole planet. All flesh is subject, creature possession. All nations are as drops in a bucket. So, most Precious there uh, that the Pharisees said to each other, the whole world's gone after him. And of course, in the 2,000 years between then and now, the Lord Jesus Christ is the best known name upon the planet. Uh, Christianity is the best known belief system. Uh, and virtually every human's date of birth is dated from the birth of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Behold, your king cometh to thee. A very precious thing to think of Christ as king. When I try and help new persons learn how to pray, to understand the, their creator, I sometimes will speak of God in terms of father and king. I think these are relatable terms for human beings to think of the creator. Um, your eyes will see the king in his beauty. Um, and of course, the Father, Jehovah, is King of Kings. The Lord Jesus is King of Kings. The Father is the first and the last. Jesus is the first and the last. The Ancient of Days, the Father of Eternity. In Isaiah 9, 5 and 6, he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the Root and the Offspring of Jesse, the Creator the incarnate deity so i will make brief mention of something friends in verse 9 he is just and having salvation you behold your king cometh to thee lowly and riding upon an ass even upon a colt the foal of an ass 
very interesting. So it speaks of the purity uh, of divine purpose in the Christ God and in all the movements of Jesus in time um, as regards uh, mankind and the transportation, as it were, of Christ, the deliverance of Christ uh, to and for men and the deliverance that God wrought through Christ men would. So then we have this interesting statement, the chariot will be cut off from Ephraim, the horse from Jerusalem. So you have Christ coming into Jerusalem on a colt, the fall of an ass. Um, and then you have the horse being cut off from Jerusalem. So it's just the mysterious ways of God. Much more could be said about these things. He shall speak peace to the nations and his dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. So, so the Son of God will rule the whole planet, illimitably, invincibly, and immortally. Now, um, very precious and crystal clear doctrine in this chapter, I have to say. He will speak peace, shalom, well-being, health, prosperity to the nations. Quite interesting that there will be no more thoughts from Jerusalem. And yet the great King Yahovah incarnate, Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, rules the planet from Jerusalem. It's as much as to say there won't be any more need for earthly defences. In those days, a horse was very much a tool of war. It could get men quickly to and from a scene of battle. It could get a man uh, quickly to go and call for help or a man to go and check if there's anyone invading. A horse was very much an essential feature of safety and deliverance in those days. Uh, and elsewhere we read, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but safety is from the Lord. In returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be your trust. But ye would not. You said, no, we will flee to Egypt on horses. That's Isaiah 30, 15 and 16. So that's what's in view there. There won't be any need for human resources. God will divinely provide everything needful. According to his divine power, he's given us all things that pertain to life and goodliness, friends. His dominion will be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. It has to be said, friends, I do have to say it. That how well I would I would like to get to specifics, but certainly the vast majority of the persons that have been uh, out on the streets of, of London and America and other places uh, chanting uh, wickedness and uh, parading around signs uh, is really uh, hatred for the Jews, Jewish hatred, Jewish racism. That's really what it is. Well, racism against the Jews, and the vast majority, of them, it has to be said, are deluded, foppish, reckless fools. Uh, a true Bible-believing Christian would not take part in such things. Um, and one of the things they chant, of course, is from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Uh, but of course, such is their deluded state that they don't realise that even taking part in declaring such a foolish, stupid statement reveals their lost condition. Because the reality is that Palestine will be free, uh, as we've read, it'll be free of the bastard, um, uh, and it'll be free um, of, of, of Hamas, and free of violence and wickedry, and free of any contrariety and adversity towards the Lord Jesus, the King of Israel. And the truth is that all those humans protesting, all flesh, will bow the knee to the Son of God. Every human that has or ever will walk this planet will bow the knee and will obey, serve, love and honour the Lord Jesus the Christ. So, we see here that they are 
not incorrect. Palestine will be free. It will be free of deluded Mohammedan mortals that are hateful and wicked. That's what it will be free of. Um, and the Son of God rules the whole planet from the river, it's the Jordan River, throughout the planet. The whole planet is ruled presently, completely ruled. All, all mortals are simply creature possession, the hand of Jehovah, the wicked his sword. Nothing moves without the Lord. Now, um, there are some promises for Christ here also. If you look at verse 11, friends, Zechariah 9, 1, 1. As for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, think of God addressing Christ in terms of his blood. As for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I will send forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. It's a very interesting scripture. Um, the traditional Christian orthodoxy, certainly Protestant and evangelical Christendom, is that once persons are in the pit of hell, there's no deliverance for them. And largely that is most assuredly the case. However, there are scriptures such as this, which appear to say um, that persons that are prisoners, well, none of the redeemed after they die are prisoners. They're in eternity awaiting physical resurrection. They're an immortal body, physical immortal body. Um, but here it's prisoners that are in a pit where there's no water. So that's a place of suffering. So that's an amazing promise to Christ by God that such persons uh, will be set free. And they are described as prisoners of hope. It's similar to the doctrine revealed in, in Peter. Uh, Peter's writings are very precious. Holiness, purity, sanctity, very precious writings. And in Peter we read uniquely that the Lord Jesus, whilst physically dead, went and preached salvation to human beings that were also dead, uh, that had been judged in the flesh in the time of Noah because they'd rejected the righteousness, holiness of truth in the word of God in Jesus that was in the mouth of Noah and his family um, and continued to practice wickedness. They were judged in the flesh, but... They were justified in the spirit. It's very precious to think of thy Lord Jesus Christ whilst physically dead, even saving souls that were judged in the flesh and they were in prison, he tells us in Peter. And here they're described as being prisoners of hope that get set free from the pit where there is no water. Very precious contemplations, they really are. Turn again to the stronghold, prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare I will render double unto thee. For I bent Judah for me. Very precious denotation. And that tells you, friends, the power of Jehovah, the sovereignty of Jehovah over all flesh. Um, I bent Yahudah for me. In other words, all things serve Elohim Yahweh. I fill the bow with Ephraim. I'll raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and make thee like the sword of a mighty man. So once again there we have the declaration that the Jews would be against those from Greece. Well, Greece and Cyprus are to the, uh, the northwest of Israel and have always been there. Uh, influential in that region of course the romans are from that region as well and it tells us that the jews will be made like the sword of a mighty man yovah shall be seen over them precious thing to think of the lord being seen over his enemies and his arrow shall go forth as a lightning and the lord jehovah will blow the trumpet and will march with the whirlwinds of the south most precious friends think of the Lord being seen over them and think of the Lord himself blowing the trumpet we tend to think of the 
and uh, the the uh, the angels blowing the trumpets we have the seven trumpets in the book of revelation uh, that are released at the opening of one of the seals i think it's the seventh seal you have the seventh seal and then you have the seven trumpets yes it's uh, revelation chapter 8 friends the seventh seal was opened there was silence in heaven half an hour then you have the seven angels who stand before God and the seven trumpets were given to them. Yes. Uh, well, here it's the Lord Jehovah sounding the trumpet, blowing the trumpet. Great thing to think of, God blowing the trumpet. And I suppose I can't think of another verse in the entire Bible where you get the Lord Jehovah blowing a trumpet. And not only blowing a trumpet, marching with the whirlwinds. A precious thing to think of the Lord himself marching, friends. You have the eyes of the Lord in every place. All mortals are the hand of the Lord, the wicked his sword. Uh, you have the ear of the Lord is not heavy that it cannot hear. The arm of the Lord is not short and that it cannot save. Um... You have the Lord blowing a trumpet. You have uh, the place of God's feet being glorious. Um, you have um, you have the Lord seeing and hearing and blowing a trumpet and marching and defending the Jews. And they'll be happy. They'll be filled like a bowl. The godly simplicity. We read elsewhere that God's dealings with the enemies of Christ, with his enemies, is just like when a man turns a bowl over or turns a plate over. I often contemplate this, friends, when doing the washing up here. You know, that, that for the Lord, dealing with his enemies is very simply like a man or a woman turning a plate over. Just like that. Well, here, um, Jehovah of will defend them, will devour, and shall tread down the sling stones. They'll drink and make a noise as from wine. They'll be filled like a bowl, like the corners of the altar. And that's good. That's in a good sense. Jehovah, their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they'll be as the stones of a crown lifted up upon his land. But how great is his goodness! How great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men flourish and new wine the maidens. Okay, friends, stay strong in the spirit and the blood in the scripture, uh, declaring the full name, the Lord Jesus, the Christ, son of the living God. The time is near. Prepare to meet your God. Baruch haba Hashem Adonai Yehovah Elohim. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Adonai Yehovah Elohim, the sovereign of the universe.